the reason why when Barack Obama left the presidency, Donald Trump succeeded him instead of another Democrat? Believe that. The truth of the matter is, is that uh, my policies are so mainstream that, you know, if if I had said the same policies that I have back in the 1980s, uh, uh, I'd be considered a moderate Republican. I mean, you know. In that same year, Hillary Clinton was at the State Department working with U.S. corporations to pressure Haiti not to raise the minimum wage to 61 cents an hour from 24 cents. I say good for Hillary. Why should those garment workers make 61 cents an hour? It only takes them three hours at work to earn enough for a bus ride home. They're doing fine. leaked a secret Citibank memo about their plan to rule the world. Back in 2005 and 6, Citigroup wrote three confidential memos to their wealthiest investors about how things were going. They reached the conclusion that the United States was no longer really a democracy, but had become a plutonomy, a society controlled exclusively by and for the benefit of the top 1% of the population who now have more financial wealth than the bottom 95% combined. The memo gloated about the growing gap between rich and poor and how they were now the new aristocracy, and that there was no end in sight for the gravy train they were. We pay twice as much for our prescription medicine in, in the United States as they do in the rest of the world. And why is that? Why do we pay twice as much? Why? Because our government is completely corrupt and everyone knows it. And it's funny when you say, hey, maybe we should have the same health care as Canada. People go, what are you, a fairy duster? You can't have that in America. And they never finish the thought. Why? Because, you, you know, our government is completely corrupted and everybody's bribed. So Bernie Sanders, and well, he's got enough of it. I live 50 miles away from Canada, and in many cases, they pay 50% less for the same exact medicine that we buy in Vermont or in America. And we all know the reason why. The power and wealth of the pharmaceutical industry and their 1,300 lobbyists and unlimited sums of money have bought the United States Congress. Let's be clear about it. Today, Mr. Trump, a guy I don't quote very often, he said that pharma gets away with murder. That's what Trump said. He's right. It didn't pass. Even though, th how many Republicans joined them? 12 or 13? Let me give me the direct number on that. Joined them, joined the Democrats. So that was the Bernie Sanders bill. To allow for the importation of prescription drugs into the United States from Canada. So I'm like, oh, this is going to pass. This is going to be great. Look at Bernie's a real leader. He's not a fairy duster. He's such a good legislator. He knows how to get Ted Cruz to go along with him. Guess who didn't go along with him? The corporate pig Democrats. Guys like, well, Cory Booker. He voted against it. And let me tell you something. When Cory Booker, that corporate pig, Booker, number three in line, $267,000. Oh, right behind Pat Murray. Patty Moore, look at that. Kratz, good for nothing, corporate pig. Here's something else Chelsea revealed, that there is an official tally of civilian deaths in Iraq and Afghanistan. Even though the Bush and Obama administration maintained publicly that there was no official count of civilian casualties, the Iraq and Afghanistan war log showed that that, was a, that claim was false. So you're telling me that George Bush and Barack Obama lied to the American people? I thought we're supposed to be upset when the president lies to us now, right? Everybody's upset because Trump lies. But apparently you can lie about the most important world, and that's okay. Because we like you. 
if you like President Obama, you won't say anything. We don't like Trump, so everything. Now, I don't know if you noticed, claim was false. Obama maintained publicly that there was never an official count of civilian casualties, and that claim was false. He lied to you about and how many people we were killing there so we could keep killing people. So we could go into Libya. So, I mean, that is the land of unconfirmed reports. Yes, we came, we saw, <laughs> he died. <laughs> so we could go into Syria. So we could go into Somalia. So we could sell cluster bombs to Saudi Arabia, which is what we do. We manufacture cluster bombs in America, which is a prime to the rest of the world. Then we sell them to Saudi Arabia so they can drop them on fishing villages in Yemen, the poorest people in the world. That's what we're doing. So you see why they got to shut down this Chelsea Manning. You see, right? Between 2004 and 2009, the United States government counted a total of 109,000 deaths in Iraq. In five years, 109,000 deaths. So that's over 20,000 people killed a year. 20,000 people killed a year because of our invasion. 66,081 classified as non-combatants. This is an article by, uh, written by Bradley Manning Support Network that there is an official policy to ignore torture in Iraq, officially. The Iraq war logs, that's what they're called, published by WikiLeaks, revealed that thousands of reports of prisoner abuse, thousands of reports of prisoner abuse and torture had been filed against the Iraqi security forces. Medical evidence detailed how prisoners had been whipped with heavy cables across the feet, hung from ceiling hooks, suffered holes being bored into their legs with electrical drills. So they would drill holes in people's legs. This is the United States. This is not Nazi Germany. This is not a concentration camp. This is the United States doing this. And people were trained to do it. People were trained to do it. Paid. They, they urinated on them, and they sexually assaulted them. What didn't they do? This order is a direct violation of the U.N. Convention Against Torture. over here and we are following this breaking news out of Washington. Some serious allegations this morning facing the State Department. That's right. According to internal State Department memos, the agency might have called off or intervened in investigation into possibly illegal and inappropriate behavior within its ranks, allegedly to protect jobs and avoid scandals. This concerns the time that Hillary Clinton was Secretary of State. We want to get right to NBC's Chief White House Correspondent Chuck Todd with the latest. Chuck, good morning to you. Good morning, Savannah. You know, there's an old saying in Washington that the cover-up is worse than the crime. But in this case, both parts of it are disturbing. Allegations of prostitution and pedophilia and allegations that those crimes were somehow covered up or not looked into. So the State Department this morning is having to respond to those claims and those investigations uh, of misconduct by State Department officials, including by an ambassador and security agents attached to then Secretary of State Hillary Clinton. And the allegations are that these investigations were whitewashed, quashed altogether, and that those orders came from high up. NBC News has obtained documents related to ongoing investigations into some disturbing allegations involving State Department personnel and at least one ambassador. A State Department memo says the ambassador, quote, routinely ditched his protective security detail in order to solicit sexual favors from both prostitutes and minor children. U.S. defense contractors were brought under much tighter supervision after leaked diplomatic cables revealed that they had been complicit in child trafficking activities. This was also... What? U.S. Co defense contractors were doing some child trafficking? Because there, is there anything scummier in the world that we could, could be a part of? We're illegally invading other countries. We're ordering torture of fuck innocent people to cover it up. And we're trafficking children.
so what I wanted to see is if you could give me a yes or no answer to the question, does the NSA collect any type of data at all on millions or hundreds of millions of Americans? No, sir. It does not? Not wittingly. There are cases where they could in inadvertently perhaps uh, collect, but not, not wittingly. What I'm saying is that the Director of National Intelligence in March did directly lie to Congress, which is against the law. He said that they were not collecting any data on American citizens. You're talking about James and Clapper. And it, and it turns out they're collecting billions of data on phone calls every day. So it was a lie. Community. What now, should be not, done about that? I mean, it, I mean, I know that, uh, that uh, Mr. Clapper went on another network and said that uh, his response and I know what you're talking about. You're talking about Senator Ron Wyden's question about uh, data collection on millions of Americans. That's when Mr. Clapper gave that response. He went on the Andrea Mitchell program and said it was the least untruthful answer he could give. I'm, I'm guessing here that you're saying that that's not satisfactory for you. <laughs> Should the president ask for his resignation? I can't imagine how he can regain his credibility. When you lie, when you frankly come in front of the Senate and a senator asks you a direct question, which, by the way, he was warned of, According to Senator Wyden's office, they called the director of national intelligence and said, we're going to ask you this question. So even though he was told in advance he would get the question, he still lied in a public hearing. And we've learned uh, that the White House's chief lawyer, Don McGahn, told the president in January that he believed then National Security Advisor Michael Flynn had misled the FBI, lied to the vice president, and, and should be fired. We know that the FBI director, James Comey, testified that the president said to Comey uh, of Flynn, he is a good guy. I hope you can let this go. Do you think that this is a case for obstruction of justice? Is it looking stronger at all to you? Well, no, because I lied under oath to Congress, says James Clapper. And if General Flynn, director of national intelligence, made false statements to the FBI, I hope he gets the same treatment I did. I'm a good guy with a long, distinguished career. I hope this is just a blimp on the road. Oh, wait. Uh, Michael Flynn is under federal prosecution for his lie to the FBI while he was not under oath. My lie to the Senate of the United States in public about a massively important surveillance operation was totally ignored. And now I get to be a CNN contributor on national intelligence because there's a double standard in this country. Well, as I said before, I'm not a lawyer, but you know, if it walks like a duck, quacks like a duck and flies like a duck. Does the NSA collect any type of data at all on millions or hundreds of millions of Americans? No, sir.